It's Wednesday, February 23rd, and the time for your body to study morning news update. A team of oil and gas specialists from Trinidad and Tobago are in Barbados to assist with an urgent oil drilling mission. Word of this from Minister of Energy, Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Kerry Simmons, who said that the specialists are helping to perforate some of the old wells in the country with a view to extracting more product. The development comes as officials here look to cushion any likely economic blow from the escalating conflict between Russia and Ukraine. On a Tuesday, following weeks of extraordinary tension between the two countries and their allies, Russian President Vladimir Putin recognized the independence of two breakaway Ukrainian regions and deployed troops to both. Minister Simmons, responding to the news, urged citizens to brace for the possible impact, revealing that the most recent developments have made the fear of increased gas prices almost inevitable. Recommendations for new laws governing the island's electoral process are now before the Chief Parliamentary Council for drafting. However, Chairman of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Queen's Counsel Leslie Haynes, revealed that none of those recommendations relate to any of the issues arising from the January 19th general election. We will soon start having start meetings again. Now we will look at the, the, the elections and we will look and see how we can do things better and improve in certain areas. Emmanuel. So the answer to the first, we, so it's a two-part answer to your question. Yes, we have been working on the laws for a long time, and two, the, what we have been working on does not yet include any review of these elections, but we will do so within the coming months. Haynes said he expects the Identity Management Authority to be up and running in another two to three years. He also disclosed that changes are also in other works to address the issue of Commonwealth residents in Barbados voting. You know, the last elections in 2018, there was this big, this big thing about Commonwealth residents yeah. in Barbados voting. So we, we have also recommended that CARICOM National, because not all, remember, not all CARICOM Nationals are Commonwealth citizens. For instance, Sur, Sur, Suriname belongs to the the carry bomb, but Surinamese are not Commonwealth citizens. President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Shamin Roland Bowen, is calling for police to enforce road traffic rules. The calls comes amid concern about the number of collisions on the island's roads. The country has recorded four fatalities so far this year. Let the police put on the foot, you know, let their presence be felt. You know, um, instead of after, you know, before. But let me let me put some more presence out there. His presence, and let me see how people getting arrested for traffic offenses and, and citations and so on for the traffic offenses. And let people know, you know, that there's the police presence out there. You know, and the law is still in control. The traffic rules and laws, you know, people got to avoid them out there. And I feel, I do feel that that would help because you know, with this COVID coming in, a lot of this was put on the back burner or cast aside. So people now taking advantage, you know, they don't believe that that traffic offences, you know, that it can get them into trouble. But it needs to be seen that yes, you're still getting it into trouble. Distracted driving, you know, when the breathalyzer when it starts, you know, fully in place, you know, they're going to be hearing about people getting pulled over, you know, for drink driving. Making examples of people we need to go back there to refresh people's minds. You know, that is danger out there um, for driving without true care and attention. And maybe, just maybe, you know, these people would stop, you know, take heat and drive um, more defensively. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. and the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mom, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mom, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, 
you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region now, Belize Prime Minister John Briseño says he will support a move to lift the curfew imposed in the country as part of the efforts aimed at curbing the spread of COVID-19. His position comes on the heels of comments by Health and Wellness Minister Kevin Bernard that he will present a paper to Cabinet this week calling for an end to the curfew and the easing of other restrictions. I think I was one of the first that said way back when I was um, co-chair with former Prime Minister um, Barrow that we have to learn to live with COVID. I realize that COVID is going to be here, here to stay. And so in cabinet we've been looking at, at, at the ways that is at the same time following the science as to how we can lift some of these restrictions. We've, take, we've had them for too long. It was necessary, but you know, there comes a time, you know, COVID is going to be here. And fortunately, um, the Omicron uh, variant is, is not as, um, as serious as the Delta. And so we believe that it is time to look at how we can open up, um, easing up restrictions, um, easing up on the, um, on, on the um, curfew, and, and finding ways on how we can better work and operate in Belize, as we call, living with COVID. On the international front, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, says the world is facing the biggest global peace and security crisis in recent years. He made the comments as he expressed concerns about the latest developments regarding Ukraine. We face a moment that I sincerely hope would not come. I'm deeply troubled by the latest developments regarding Ukraine, including reports of increased ceasefire violations across the contact line and the real risk of further escalation on the ground. And I am especially concerned for the safety and well-being of all those who have already suffered from so much death, destruction and displacement. Let me be clear. The decision of the Russian Federation to recognize the so-called independence of certain areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions is a violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. Such a unilateral measure conflicts directly with the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and is inconsistent with the so-called Friendly Relations Declaration of the General Assembly which the International Court of Justice has repeatedly cited as representing international law. He says that the UN will not relent in the search for a peaceful solution. The United Nations, in line with the relevant Security Council and General Assembly resolution, stands fully behind the sovereignty, political independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its international recognized borders. We are continuing to support the people of Ukraine through our humanitarian operations and human rights efforts. At this critical moment, I call for an immediate ceasefire and re-establishment of the rule of law. We need restraint and reason. We need de-escalation now. I urge all to refrain from actions and statements that would take this dangerous situation over the brink. It is high time to return to the path of dialogue and negotiations. We must rally and meet this challenge together for peace and to, to save the people of Ukraine and beyond from the scourge of war. I am fully committed to all efforts to resolve this crisis without further bloodshed. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.